if you keep a saltwater aquarium long enough, eventually something is going to go wrong in that tank and you're going to have to fix it. How you do that is going to determine what your tank looks like after you make that repair. And before we get too deep into this, why don't you jump into the comments and let me know if you're currently dealing with a problem or if maybe you've just finished up dealing with a problem. Let me know what it was and how you took care of it. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in a saltwater aquarium, from algae to microorganisms that are in overabundance of population. And how you take care of that makes a really big difference for your tank. There are a ton of products on the market that might kill this thing or remove that thing, or sometimes maybe you have to add this thing to make this other thing grow or something like that. Most of these are Band-Aid fixes. And when that Band-Aid runs its lifespan out and it's over and done with, if you haven't fixed the source of what's causing the problem, that problem is just going to come right back. A prime example that I've been dealing with with my own tank lately is green hair algae. Now, I have multiple other issues, and we're going to talk about that more towards the end of the video. But for example, the green hair algae that I've been dealing with, I could take care of the green hair algae by doing some of the band-aid fixes that you see all over the internet, like a tank blackout or running fluconazole or anything like that. But once those things have done what they were going to do, the green hair algae always comes back. And primarily that's because I am providing that green hair algae with plenty of fuel in the way of phosphates and they just keep growing. Now here's the kicker to all this. The entire time that I've been dealing with this, my phosphates have been at a measurable level of 0.3. Now, they did spike after I cleaned the sump a month or so ago, but they've pretty much been at 0.3 for quite some time. But that's only the phosphates that I can measure with an at-home test kit, which are already not that accurate, but it's the phosphates available in the water. It cannot measure the phosphates that have been absorbed by the rocks and by the substrate, etc., so when you're trying to fight these problems, you have to really analytically dial it down to what is causing the problem. And in my case, phosphates come from something you're putting into the tank. You're either putting bad water in there if your RODI unit is not you know, filtering out things the way that it should be. And I do highly recommend that you run an RODI unit. They're so cheap these days, you can get one for a hundred bucks on Amazon. I'll link one in the description below. Not running one, is just kind of silly at this point. Or it might be coming from the food that you're putting in the tank. I was using frozen food, which is not supposed to have an excess of phosphates, so I wasn't rinsing it, but I've started rinsing my food. And I installed granular ferric oxide onto the tank to just draw out even more of those phosphates. And fixing all of those problems, I still have a measurable level of phosphates in the tank. So there's more in there then I'm actually measuring in the water. And that's evidenced by the fact that I am constantly removing them, yet the algae continues to grow. So you see, if I were to run a fluconazole treatment through this tank, which I did a couple of months or a couple of weeks ago, it helped for a day or two. And then everything started going right back the way it was because I didn't fix the problem. The fluconazole was a band aid, not a real fix. Dialing into the source of whatever is causing your problem with your aquarium can be very difficult sometimes. And one of the best tools that we have at our disposal as reef aquarium keepers is a microscope. And those also are fairly cheap these days. You can get one of those for under a hundred bucks. I have the one that's linked in the description, which was sent to me by one of you. And I really appreciate it. And you know who you are. So thank you very much for that. But having a microscope has allowed me to identify that I actually have four problems, not just one. I have GHA growing in the tank. I also have red filamentous cyanobacteria growing. I have prorocentrum dinoflagellates, which is a terrible thing to have in your tank. And I also have diatoms. And the issue that I was having is that each one of these Band-Aid fixes that I was trying to put on the tank, even knowing that they were Band-Aids, would exacerbate one of the other issues. I had cyanobacteria, I ran chemicline in the tank, it killed all the cyano, but then the dinoflagellates went crazy because the microbiome had been diminished by the cyanobacteria. So before you go out and chase all of these rabbit holes with these products that remove this or remove that or take this away or take that away, analytically study your aquarium. 
ask some experienced reef keepers what they think about your problem. And if you have to, get some microscopic identification of the thing that you're trying to beat. Let's just take cyanobacteria, for example. If you have cyanobacteria in your tank, and all tanks always have a little bit of cyano, just like all tanks always have some diatoms, and they always have a few dinoflagellates in there. They're always in there, but they're always managed in population by the microbiome and by the nutrient load in the aquarium and by your lighting photoperiod. But with the cyanobacteria, if I kill that off with chemiclean, the chances that it can come back are very, very high because what I've done is kill the animal, not take away its fuel source. The takeaway from all of this is to figure out what's causing the problem. In my case with the dinoflagellates, my RODI filter was allowing silicates to come through on the RODI. Usually with prolocentrum dinoflagellates, the fix to that is to add silicates to the tank and allow the diatom bloom to flourish. But in my case, I don't know if those are the right types of silicates coming through my RODI. It's feeding some of the other stuff. And I never really had a strong, ugly phase in this tank where the diatoms bloomed in population and consumed them because I'm continually adding silicates to the tank. But I have a silica buster RODI filter on the way that's going to remove all of the silicates and I have Brightwell silicates here, which are the right kind to make sure that your diatoms are in the proper population in your aquarium. So I'll be able to get that set. And after making some changes the other day, I have some diatoms showing up down here in my sand bed. So the problem that I'm having with my tank is a microbiome issue. It's not that I'm putting too much phosphates or I'm putting too much nitrates by the way of food or light or other things and additives and whatnot. My bacterial biome, even though my nitrogen cycle is complete, the bacterial diversity in my tank has failed. There are no copepods left in this tank. I looked for almost an hour last night trying to find even a single one, and I wasn't able to do that. For some reason, they've all died off. But I've done everything that I can do to make sure there's no toxins in the tank. I've run carbon to take everything out. I've done the water changes and all that. So you can, you, you can understand where I'm going here. I'm eliminating things one by one by one until we get down to the actual root of the problem, which appears to be silicates coming from my RODI and phosphates coming into the tank from somewhere, probably from the food that I'm using. Now, a lot of people have been giving me crap for giving you guys advice, even though my tank is not completely packed full of corals. But the thing that I'm doing here is I'm trying to show you what real reefing looks like. Those tanks that you see out there that look absolutely pristine, they're the few. They're not the many. There are people who have perfect aquariums. Most of us are going to end up with something that causes us a problem. And finding the root of the cause of that problem is going to allow you to fix it when it don't come back. And the only thing left for you to do now is to watch this video on screen right now. I think you'll find that pretty interesting.